Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and you are watching Our History. Today we are looking over Piet Retief, Piet Moritz Retief, who was born on the 12th of November 1780 and died on the 6th of February 1838, was a Voortrekker leader. Settling in 1814 in the frontier region of the Cape Colony, he later assumed command of the punitive expeditions during the Sixth Corsa War. He became a spokesperson for the frontier farmers who voiced their discontent and wrote the Voortrekkers Declaration at their departure from the colony. He was a leading figure during their great trek and at one stage their elected governor. He proposed Natal as the final destination of their migration and selected a location for its future capital, later named Pieter Maritzburg, in his honor. The massacre of Retief and his delegation by the Zulu King Dingane and the extermination of several Voortrekker lager camps in the area of the present town of Vienna led to the Battle of Blood River on the Nkome River. The short-lived Boer Republic Natalia suffered from ineffective government and was eventually annexed to the British Cape Colony. His early life. Retief was born to Jacobus and Deborah Retief in the Wagensmakers Vallei, Cape Colony. Today the town of Wellington, South Africa. His family were Boers of French Huguenot ancestry. His great-grandfather was the 1689 Huguenot refugee François Retief from Mer et Cher near Bloy, the progenitor of the name in South Africa. Retief grew up on the ancestral vineyard Val van Pas, where he worked until the age of 27. After moving to the vicinity of Grahamstown, Retief, like other Boers, acquired wealth through livestock but suffered repeated losses through Corsa raids in the period. These prompted the Sixth Cape Frontier War. Retief had a history of financial trouble. On more than one occasion, he lost money and other possessions, mainly through land speculation. He is reported to have gone bankrupt at least twice while at the colony and on the frontier. Such losses impelled many frontier farmers to become voortrekkers, literally forward movers, and to migrate to new lands in the north. Retief wrote their manifesto, dated the 22nd of January. 1837, setting out their long-held grievances against the British government. They believed it had offered them no protection against the armed raids by the native Bantus, no redress against French government policies, and financially broke them through the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833, which freed their slaves with compensation offered to owners, which hardly amounted to a quarter of the slaves' market value. Retief's manifesto was published in the Grahamstown Journal on the 2nd of February and the State African on the 17th of February, just as the immigrant Boers started to leave their homesteads. The Great Trek Retief's household departed in two wagons from his farm in the Wintersberg district in early February 1837 and joined a party of 30 other wagons. The pioneers crossed the Orange River into independent territory. When several parties on the Great Trek converged at the Fet River, Retief was elected governor of the United Lagers and head of the Free Province of New Holland in South East Africa. This coalition was very short-lived and Retief came the lone leader of the group that moved eastwards. On the 5th of October 1837, Retief established a camp of 54 wagons at Kerkenberg near the Drakensberg Ridge. He proceeded on horseback the next day, accompanied by Jan Geritse Bankis and 14 men with four wagons to explore the region between the Drakensberg and Port Natal, now known as KwaZulu Natal. It was Banki's second visit to Port Natal, his first having been there in 1834, Komisitrak, reconnaissance mission. At Port Natal, Retief was taken by the potential of the bay and the possibilities of it becoming a Dutch free trade port. Bankies and two companions sent back to the lager at Kerkenberg with a message to the camp on the 2nd of November 1837 announcing to the trackers that they may now enter Natal. Due to his favorable impression of the region, Retief started negotiations for the land with the Zulu king Dingane Kasenza Gakona, known as Dingane or Dingan, in November 1837. After Retief led his band over the Drakensberg Mountains, he convinced Voortrekker leader Gerrit Maritz and Andries Hendrik Potgieter to join him in January 1838. On Retief's second visit to Dingane, the Zulu agreed to Boer settlement in Natal, provided that the Boer delegation recover cattle stolen by the rival Tlokwa nation. 
this the Boers did, their reputation and rifles cowing the people into handing over some 700 head of cattle. At Retief's request, J. G. Bunkies drew up the famous Pitretief Dingaan Treaty, outlining the areas of Natal to be secured for the Boers to settle and start for their new farms and harbour. This was done and to be ratified at the Zulu King's Kraal, his death. Despite warnings, Retief left the Tugela region on the 25th of January 1838 in the belief that he could negotiate with Dingane for permanent boundaries for the Natal settlement. The deed of session of the Tugela Umzimvubu region, although dated 4th of February 1838, was signed by Dingane on the 6th of February 1838, with the two sides recording three witnesses each. Dingane invited Retief's party to witness a special performance by his soldiers, whereupon Dingane orders his soldiers to capture Retief's party and their colored servants. Retief, his son Peter Cornelius, men and servants, about a hundred people in total, were taken to a nearby ridge, Kwa Matiwane, named after Matiwane, one of Dingane's tribal chiefs who was executed in a horrific manner. The Zulus killed Retief's entire party by clubbing them and killed Retief last, so as to witness the deaths of his son and his comrades. Retief's chest was sawn open and his heart and liver removed and brought to Dingane in a cloth. Their bodies were left on the Kwamatiwane hillside to be eaten by vultures and scavengers, as was Dingane's custom with his enemies. Dingane then directed the attack against the Fuertracker lagers, which plunged the migrant movement into temporary disarray and in total 534 men, women and children were killed. Following the Fuertracker victory at the Blood River, Andres Petorius and his victory commando recovered the remains of the Retief party. They buried them on the 21st of December 1838. Also recovered was the undamaged deed of session from Retief's leather purse written by Jan Gerritse Bankis, Retief's secretary, as later verified by a member of the Victory Commando, E. F. Potriter. Two exact copies survive, either of which could be the original, but legend states the original deed disappeared in transit to the Netherlands during the Anglo-Boer War. The site of the Retief Retief grave was more or less forgotten until pointed out in 1896 by J. H. Hutton, a surviving member of Pretorius's commando. A monument recording the names of the members of Retief's delegation was erected near the grave in 1922. His legacy. The town of Piet Retief was named after him as was partially the city of Peter Maritzburg. It is reported by the Voortrekker minister at the time, Erasmus Smith, who served with Peter Retief in his diary, that on the 23rd of October 1838, the Voortrekker Council of the Legislative Body has named the first village settlement Peter Maritzburg. The first name is after the late deceased His Excellency Piet Retief, formerly the governor, and the second name is after his honor, the late deceased Gia M. Maritz, the president of the Council of the Policy in the camp. Some, however, continue to speculate that the Maritz part was after naming Gerrit Maritz, another Voortrekker leader, from the start. However, Peter Maritzburg was originally Peter Moritzburg, thereby incorporating both Retief's first and second name. It was only afterwards that the U was dropped and the decreed that Maritz were also be remembered in the title. Rhodes University has a residence named after Retief in Kimberley Hall. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to hit the like button and be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and YouTube will let you know as soon as our next video is released. Stay safe and stay strong.